Street Court. So good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Brenna Goggin. I'm the Director of Leadership Development at River Network. I use pronouns she, her, hers, and I am on the ancestral lands of the Nanakoke and Lenape Lenape. And I am very excited uh, for today's presentation from TechSoup about digital transformation and they're use, looking at their digital assessment tool, something I think that's gonna provide significant value to all of us as we're looking at the myriad of technological choices out there and talking about bringing our staff, our volunteers, our board along in our journey. And one of the favorite things that we love talking about here at River Network planning and how do we plan for the technology that we need. Um, and so just a few housekeeping things. This uh, session is 90 minutes. It will be recorded. We have some polls throughout, but you won't be put into breakout rooms. Um, we are going to be guided through some of the initial assessment questions towards the end of the presentation, so you'll have a general feel of the types of questions you'll be asked if you decide to partake in the digital assessment tool. Um, for the most part, we will be on mute, uh, but I invite you to come on to video so that we can see your smiling faces. I invite you also to either come off of mute to ask questions, use your reaction button to raise your hand or put any of your questions that you might have in the chat box. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and right now, just introducing yourself using the chat box, your name and your organization, and maybe what brought you here today. Uh, we just wanna make a nice welcoming space for you as we get started. Um, with that, I will turn it over to our host uh, to begin our presentation. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Felipe Reyes. Uh, I'm the uh, Director of Customer Development at TechSoup. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm excited to uh, share some of the things we do at, at TechSoup and uh, learn a few more things along the way on uh, the, uh, your initiatives and maybe specific things that, uh, that you're working through, maybe challenges you may have. Uh, TechSoup uh, has a lot of resources and uh, we'll be covering kind of at a high level. We'll be focusing on the digital assessment tool, but I'll give you an overview on a high level about TechSoup. Um, but this is interactive, and so we allowed plenty of time uh, so that we don't kind of run out of time and say, well, we'll table that, we'll come back to you. Uh, we really want to you know, tease out and answer, tease out any questions you have, answer any questions you have. Uh, and so please feel free to, to chime in. Um, so uh, let me just share my screen here. So let's see here, you can see that, right? Yep, okay. All righty. So, uh, like I said, I'm Felipe uh, Reyes, uh, Director of Customer Development. Uh, there's my contact information. Uh, TechSoup is headquartered in San Francisco, uh, but we have a lot of folks that work remotely. Uh, and so uh, I'm in Chicago, and so I'm in the Midwest, Central Time. Uh, and so that's strategic. Uh, a lot of um, uh, nonprofits, there's a lot in the East Coast, you know, there's a lot in, uh, in, in Mountain Time. And so uh, being central time, I'm able to kind of, uh, you know, straddle both time zones, uh, you know, and then Pacific is, you know, also covered by me, but I have a teammate that covers the Pacific zone. So uh, here's my cell number, uh, okay to text. And so if you have any questions, you can email me, um, you know, but uh, I'm also willing to take some texts. Just let me know uh, who you are and who you're with. Uh, and so sometimes I get these uh, texts from folks with a number and I'm like, excuse me, who are you again? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you talked to me three weeks ago. And so uh, just let me know who you are and what, uh, what you know that you're with River Network and uh, and that's a kind of a fast track to get into me. So either way, I'm, I'm fine with that. So um, we're gonna have a little polling question here. So, uh, you know, wondering, first of all, who has heard of, of TechSoup? And so you should have uh, a little pop up here. The pop up set, and we have just about everybody filling it out. Um, and I, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised uh, that all of our participants today have heard of TechSoup. Yeah, that's great. That's great to hear. You know, we uh, we work with uh, with a lot of different uh, nonprofits, and uh, some of them have never heard of us. You know, when we first uh, reach out to them. Uh, and so I'm glad uh, to hear that uh, that you've heard of us. We've been around for a while, so that's good. So um, let me see here, share results. 
Can you see those results? Yes. Let me bring them up here and we can see that. So, all righty, great. Uh, close that out. Oops. Here we go. So uh, about TechSoup, so TechSoup is a nonprofit social enterprise that connects NGOs with mission critical resources worldwide. And so we are in 200 countries. Uh, we're in the, the countries where, we're, where we don't have a presence are kind of the usual suspects, the embargo countries, you know, North Korea, Iran, you know, those are, are uh, countries where we're, we're not operating. But we have a presence in 200 countries, sometimes directly and sometimes through partners, which is called the TechSoup Global Network. Uh, and so that's this uh, little bubble up here. Uh, we have partners, uh, local country partners. Uh, and the reason is that they uh, know, you know, the local economy and the local country much better than we would. And so we partner with them. We also have uh, corporate partners. And so we kind of straddle two different worlds. Uh, we uh, support and help nonprofit organizations, but we also work with the corporate social responsibility departments and philanthropic arms of uh, corporations like Microsoft and DocuSign and Google. Uh, and so we work with them uh, to get their products uh, in the hands of nonprofits, either as a donation or deeply discounted. Uh, and so we uh, we also have uh, you know funders. And so we have uh, organizations that contribute funds for us to develop certain things. Uh, we're going to go over the digital assessment tool today. And, uh, and so that was uh, a funded initiative. And so it's no charge to nonprofits to be able to take the assessment. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's free. It does cost something. It costs something to develop and it costs something to maintain. Uh, and that is all funded so that there's no cost to the nonprofit. And so we kind of uh, are in the middle straddling the world between the nonprofits and, uh, and, and the uh, corporations and then facilitating the exchange of value for, for folks. On to the next one here. And so basically our mission, uh, if it were to say it in one sentence, is to build a dynamic bridge that leverages technology to enable connections and innovative solutions for a more equitable planet. And so we work with 501c3 organizations, at least that's an equivalent uh, around the world. Uh, and the 501c3, the tax code, and the IRS tax code are charitable organizations. And so uh, that's who we work with. There are C4s and C6 organizations out there. There are trade groups and trade associations, things like that. So uh, there's different uh, types of nonprofits and we work uh, at, uh, strictly with the 501c3s. Uh, and so uh, organizations that are trying to make the planet more equitable. Um, the, uh, the donor companies set their own rules when it comes to their products. And so they have elig eligibility rules. You know, you'll see that in our product catalog that, uh, you know, they have restrictions on who can get their product uh, either as a donation or a discount. So, uh, and so we can't, we don't set those rules. And sometimes the, the rules fit an organization, sometimes they don't. Those are really up to the uh, the donor company. They get to set those rules, but there is one universal rule that they all have, and that is that they uh, want to make sure that their products are uh, are going towards five hundred one c three nonprofit organizations in the charitable uh, uh, category. And so that uh, we validate uh, nonprofits around the world. It's much easier to do in the U.S. Uh, than it is uh, in other countries because of our you know tax code. Uh, but we do validation services uh, around the world. And so if there's a nonprofit, you know, in like, uh, you know, East, uh, Eastern Europe, Europe, um, and they want to, you know, be able to get products from us, uh, then they have to validate and then we go through a process for that. And so um, that's the validation. So uh, our impact, we, we've been around for a while. Uh, and so we've been, been able to, uh, you know, acquire uh, partners and have a pretty big impact on civil society. And so we serve about 1.3 million nonprofits around the world. Uh, we delivered, we've delivered so far about $16 billion in market value of in-kind tech. And so what that means is that the market value is the retail price of something. And so the retail price of a software package might be, you know, $200. Uh, you know, you might get it as a donation or get it for like $20 or something. And so the retail value is the, is the, or the market value of that product. And so $16 billion, that's a pretty significant uh, dollar figure of, uh, of value that we're delivering. Um, you know, we reach about 236 countries. Uh, we support like 39 languages and we have 62 partners around the world. And so we, uh, you know, we, we have a, a pretty uh, big impact for an organization that's uh, not that large. We have 200 employees here at TechSoup. 
uh, you know, there's uh, organizations you know, that are much larger. As, as far as nonprofits go, I think we're, we might be pretty big. Um, uh, I, I just a quick glance of some testimonials here. You'll get a copy of the uh, the PowerPoint, so you'll be able to kind of read these a little bit. But uh, you'll see some testimonials of folks. Um, anytime we talk to folks uh, at meetings, at conferences, um, and if they're involved with TechSoup, they all have to say the same thing. They're like, "Oh, we love TechSoup," both on the on the donor side and on the nonprofit side. And so uh, we feel like we have a very uh, good reputation because uh, we're here to help. Uh, and, uh, and so we do our best to try to help folks. And uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we're, we're universally liked <laughs> uh, you know, by both donors and nonprofits. Uh, you can get started if you're not already uh, uh, a member of TechSoup. Uh, you can be, it's pretty easy to get started. Uh, it's no, there's no charge to, uh, you know, being a member of TechSoup and getting your organization qualified. So step one is to sign up. And so, uh, you know, it, it, there'll be some hyperlinks on a little PDF that we have uh, where you can click and go to sign up. But you get started by signing up on kind of a personal account. Uh, and so the, the, you sign up and then you have access to a lot of different resources like forums and articles and blogs, you know, and so that's, it's a quick, easy step. Uh, you could probably get through it in about five minutes and uh, and you're done. And so now you are, uh, you know, essentially a member of TechSoup. Then there's a little bit deeper dive in step two where you add your organization. And so you're not, as an individual member in step one, you're not uh, yet authorized to request any products uh, through our product catalog. So you don't have access to the product catalog just yet. You can see it, but you can't request anything because you need an Onyx ID to be able to then place orders. And you get that by going through step two. And so through your... Uh, uh, initial signup form, you go and you add your organization, uh, and then it asks for some additional information on there, like your you know, EIN number, uh, you know, uh, you know, your, you know, your size of your organization, different questions that then go to our validation services team. Uh, and then there's a bit of exchange back and forth between, uh, you know, yourself and TechSoup validation services. Uh, you have to provide a determinacy letter uh, from the IRS uh, proving that you are a 501c3. And so uh, in the U.S., we can get through this process in about five to seven days, five to seven business days. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, you, you can get qualified and then you have access to step three, our, our exclusive offers. And so our product catalog. And so it's a pretty simple three step process. Uh, the PDF that you get uh, will uh, you'll be able to click on these hyperlinks and it takes you right there. Um, and so if uh, you're already a TechSoup member, you've already gone through this, you can go straight to the product catalog and you can request products though you usually have to go through your registered agent. Uh, and so there's usually one person that is a registered agent for an organization that's responsible for placing the orders. And so that's uh, usually someone you uh, determine within your organization that will be the person that can request uh, products. And so um, you can do that. Um, and so then a little example of some of our funding partners, strategic partners, corporate uh, uh, corporate partners. And so Microsoft is a has been for a long time a big supporter of, uh, of TechSoup, but there are other organizations that are stepping up as well, like Adobe and Cisco, uh, you know, uh, Amazon Web Services, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So there's, excuse me, a lot of different, um, you know, organizations that help support uh, what it is that we do at, at different levels. And so, um, I'll stop there, see if there's any questions or comments before I kind of take a, a little bit deeper dive into the TechSoup ecosystem that kind of shows you in a kind of unique view, uh, all the things that we do. So you can go to our website, you can kind of look around, but I, I'm gonna give you kind of this unique perspective and a high level view on kind of these different uh, areas within TechSoup that might be of interest to you. So, but I'll stop there and see if there's any uh, questions from anyone. We don't currently have any questions in the chat, uh, but for those that just joined us, feel free to use the chat box to put in any questions or also come on to video and off of mute to have your questions answered directly. Okay, great. So uh, let me see here. Can you see my little bubble map there? All righty. Okay, cool. So I call, I call this a bubble map. It's this little interactive map that I put together that kind of helps me uh, show people uh, a little bit about uh, about TechSoup and what it is that we do. Uh, you know, over here, there's some some links and things that uh, that are, are useful for folks. I've been trying to get this out to folks in an interactive PDF, but for some reason, it's not working. But um, uh, I'll see if I can kind of work through that and I'll, I'll work with uh, 
run on trying to get this uh, this to you. But there's different uh, links and tools that you can have, like nine key areas of responsibility for executive directors, five key qualities to look for in, in a uh, nonprofit executive. And so there's some links here. U.S. nonprofit startup resources, you know, some links that you can use. Uh, you know, you can uh, take a look at some getting started with TechSoup, you know, why join TechSoup, you know, what we offer. There's links embedded here. Uh, and then uh, I run a very small team. Uh, customer development is new uh, at TechSoup. And so we've done a really good job at, uh, at e-commerce uh, where people sign up, they go request product, and, and no one ever talks to, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the nonprofits. Very, very, very rarely do we talk to them. And so uh, we've done, uh, we started this about a year ago. We we're trying to do more outreach and get deeper relationships with folks instead of just transactional. Um, and so uh, it's myself and then my, my partner, Marilyn DeMorans, Marilyn out in, in uh, California. Uh, and uh, this is uh, our small team. And so we are, are trying to make a concerted effort to uh, get deeper with folks and have deeper relationships. Um, on the right side here, this is kind of the nitty gritty of, uh, of what it is that we do. And so I'm going to, we have different uh, verticals here. So technology planning, access to technology, installation and management of tech, staff, staff and volunteer training and connection to resources. And so uh, starting with technology planning, this is where the digital assessment tool resides. We're gonna take a deeper dive on this today, uh, but the digital assessment tool, uh, it, it assesses your, uh, you know, how uh, competent and capable you are across seven different areas. Um, you know, there's our introductory assessment and then there's six different key focus areas operations and collaboration, fundraising and development, you know, digital security. And so you go through each one of these, uh, these assessments and we'll take a, a little bit deeper dive on these. And it takes uh, you know, a, a deeper look into different focus areas. So operations and collaboration, it looks at finance management, human resource management, workplace collaboration, information management, organization insights. And so uh, you go through these assessments and you're then able to come back with a report on the state of, uh, of digital resiliency within your organization. And so uh, you take the introductory assessment once, all the other assessments you can take more than once. And so we recommend that you take the baseline and then come back and take it again uh, once maybe you've made some changes, implemented some tech, maybe hired new people, and then maybe you've gone up or down, maybe you lost people, you know, maybe you were very capable in one area, but somebody moved on and, and now you're not as capable in that area. And so. Uh, you know, you can take it as often as, as you'd like, uh, you know, you can set the cadence, but we recommend, you know, at least every two years, uh, you know, to take it uh, more frequently if you'd like, you know. And so that's grant funded. Uh, and we're, I'm not going to dive too deeply into the digital assessment tool because we're going to take a deeper dive and actually see the tool itself. But that falls under uh, our technology and planning. Uh, there's a, a Microsoft product recommendation tool for nonprofits. And so you're able to, you know, click on this and, and, and take you to that tool and see uh, based on your organization, what Microsoft would recommend. And then there's this uh, 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 digital readiness survey. So these are the results of that survey, uh, uh, data handling and digital readiness survey results. And so I can share that with folks if you're interested in receiving them. Uh, and so that's tech planning, not going to go too deep because we're going to get deeper later on in this call. Then uh, there's access to technology and our tech marketplace. And this is what everybody knows us for. You know, if anybody knows TechSoup, this is kind of the, the, the most visited place uh, on our site is the tech marketplace. This is where you go to get, you know, your software, your hardware, your cloud licensing. You know, this is this is the uh, the number one thing people, uh, you know, uh, oops, visit us for. Thank you. So uh, when you go and it, you have different, our catalog is broken up into different categories, accounting, you know, uh, software, you know, cloud computing, communications. Uh, you can take a look and see uh, for accounting and finance, you know, you go into our actual product catalog page. And we have, for example, you know, QuickBooks. Uh, and so you have QuickBooks here, uh, QuickBooks online, one year subscription. Uh, and there, you'll see here there's an admin fee and that's $75 for the admin fee. The admin fee is the, is the revenue that TechSoup makes. This is what we make to kind of uh, make our money and run our organization to, you know, you know, pay the bills and, you know, and, and pay, pay salaries. So it's not, we're not a reseller and we're not uh, a, uh, 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 you know, a, uh, a commission-based organization where we're making commissions off of sales. Uh, and so let me just pop this out real quick here. So if we look at, uh, you know, QuickBooks, the admin fee is $75 for QuickBooks Online. 
uh, plus one year subscription for up to five users. Uh, the description of the product here, and uh, and then uh, the subscription details. It goes you know into further detail here. Uh, and so QuickBooks Plus online software helps organizations manage essential financials. Uh, this donation uh, is a donation that provides one year subscription for up to five users. So it's a donation that you have to pay. Uh, and then you have to pay TechSoup uh, $75, you know, every, every year is an admin fee. So uh, you can, if you look at the retail price of what QuickBooks Online is, uh, $75 is, a, you know, basically a fraction of what it is. And so uh, the admin fee is what we keep. Sometimes there's some information here that says you pay the admin fee plus, you know, you get a 50% discount or 80% discount depending. So that's, uh, that's how that product catalog works. Uh, and so this is what we're known for is, uh, is our product catalog. We have hardware as well. And so, you know, we have uh, computers and electronics, you know, we have refurbished desktops and laptops. Our refurbished program um, has a, a now a two year warranty. And so uh, it used to be one year, now it's two years. We also have a 30 day, uh, no questions asked money back guarantee. So if you go and you buy uh, a refurbished laptop from TechSoup and uh, you know, two weeks later, you're like, yeah, I really don't like it for whatever reason. You don't have to give a reason or anything. Just Return it, and you get 100% refund on your money. There's no restocking fee or anything like that. And so it really takes the risk out of trying to get any, any hardware or anything. And so this is what we're known for is, uh, yeah, you know, the uh, the hardware and uh, the software. So our tech marketplace is uh, is kind of what people know us for. Uh, we have a technology wish list. So we don't have something on our on our um, product catalog and you want it, uh, you can fill something out in, on our forum, which is a technology wish list. There's a link for it here. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can send you that link if you'd like, uh, the, uh, what we do is we compile the wish list, And once we get critical mass on a specific product, our development team will reach out to a donor company. So that happened recently with bill.com. A lot of folks started saying that they, uh, they would really like to have bill.com as a product on our catalog. Uh, and so some people put in, they want bill.com. Some people upvoted, uh, somebody's posting on bill.com and it got to critical mass that then our development team went over to build.com and said, look at all these nonprofits that, you know, can really use your product. We should talk about putting it on our product catalog. And they did. And so that uh, technology wish list, you know, works. Um, the next is uh, installation management of tech. Uh, and so, you know, we have uh, uh, tech services as well. Uh, a couple of things I want to highlight here. Uh, so on website services, we have this assessment here. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's free. It's a website wellness assessment. And so you go, you sign up. We partner with a company called Tap Network, and you uh, you fill out the uh, the form, and then you go and you and you conduct. Uh, they're, they're able to conduct a website wellness assessment for you. They ask you a series of questions, and uh, and then they kind of visit your site and kind of you know put a program through it, and uh, and then come back with an assessment or report, and they say, here's uh, how you're doing with your website. And so a lot of times, you know, uh, if you have a website. That's our, our customer facing, um, you know, uh, you know, storefront, if you will, you know, even if you're not selling anything, it's your customer facing portal. Uh, and so how well are you doing there? I know that a lot of nonprofits are always looking for exposure. Uh, they want people to, uh, to, you know, find them and know who they are and help support their mission. And, uh, and so when you're putting up your, uh, your customer facing portal, you know, how well is that doing? And so that website wellness assessment can do that. Um, we also have consulting services, marketing services, installation, managed tech, you know, so there's help desk, you know, and so a one-time fix or ongoing support, you know, there's some price points associated here. You can pay, you know, $350 annually to get ongo ongoing support from our partner called Bass, and they can be your help desk. And so, you know, instead of trying to, you know, call somebody or maybe Google, you know, some stuff, if you, if you start getting a little bit more, uh, you know, intricate in your, in your technology stack, uh, you might need some support uh, at a deeper level. And so the help desk really helps there. Uh, and the marketing services is another uh, one I'd like to tap uh, to point out here. And there's this digital marketing assessment, you know, and so that's also funded. So there's no cost there. And we'll put some links on the, on the chat for these. Uh, and so the digital marketing assessment is how good are you doing with like SEO and some of your digital marketing things. And so once again, uh, exposure to the, your audience. And so can people find you? Uh, and so how are you doing on the digital marketing front? Uh, and so TAP Network works with, works with us there as well. And so these two things here, uh, you know, well, three, the, uh, the digital assessment tool is no cost for you. The website wellness assessment, no cost either. And the digital marketing assessment, no cost as well either there. And so if you're just getting started with TechSoup, uh, you can go and, you know, sign up, add your organization, 
Uh, but before you start, you know, requesting any products, if you know what you want, that's great. But these are three great assessments to start with, and you have a nice baseline uh, to to, uh, to start going down that road with. Um, the next thing I, I have here is uh, staff and volunteer training. Uh, and so we have these uh, online courses that we've developed. And so these are our TechSoup courses. We've, uh, we, we've developed these ourselves. Uh, and uh, we have uh, a variety of different topics. And so the top 10 are things like Excel, you know, Teams, grant writing management, you know, fundraising for nonprofits, data analytics. Uh, and so these are online courses. There's a charge for them, but it's nominal cost. Sometimes it's a one hour course or two hour course for like $10 or something. If it's a series of courses, it might wind up being like $50. Uh, and so it, it kind of gets you up to speed. And the whole thing is that when it comes to technology, you can implement tech, but you have to kind of bring your people along as well. And so you need to get them trained up. And so there's uh, things that you can do here uh, on our courses. We have them as uh, on-demand computer-based. So we have 100 level and 200 level courses. So basic and a little bit more advanced. These are self-paced online computer-based training. We also have something that's pretty unique, which is our 300 level courses. And on those, those are um, uh, they're hybrid. So they're online. And then they're also you know, meeting through Zoom in a small group. And so you're able to work on a project uh, with an instructor you know, for six to nine weeks. And so there are other folks from other organizations that are in your cohort with you and you're learning together. So you go and you do your online portion, but then you come together uh, you know, every week and uh, we know, instructor led, you talk about that lesson you just did online. You, know, you talk about you know, challenges that you have. And so it's, uh, it's really, Kind of interactive and uh, and then you get to co-mingle with other folks that might have you know similar challenges and so those are those are pretty pretty good uh and so uh we have uh that's for our our courses and online training we have some how-to guides we have webinars and events as well that can kind of help uh, train up people and then finally uh we have uh you know connection to resources so we have our TechSoup forums and blogs social media TechSoup connect you know newsletters uh we have quad uh which is uh uh, a platform that we've recently developed and launched, uh, which is an online community of like-minded people. And so you can join Quad. Uh, there's a lot of different benefits there on uh, being able to interact with others, ask questions, answer questions, you know, build your network uh, and interact with other folks in the civil society space. Uh, and then finally, uh, connection to resources here, we have this you know, Google ad grant. And so uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Google provides uh, this grant for up to ten thousand dollars in in-kind uh, donation for Google Ads, and so that you know, if you're if you're buying Google Ads, uh, Google as a nonprofit, Google will give you up to ten thousand uh, dollars if in-kind uh, donation per month. So that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year uh, for to spend on uh, Google Ads, you know, like keywords. Um, and so there's there's some limitations, like you can't spend more than you know two dollars per per keyword. So there might be a hot keyword that's five dollars. You can't use the grant towards that. Uh, and so there's some limits, uh, but it's it's $120,000 free and clear of in-kind. And so we, we wanna make people aware, we need to send people, we need to send you over to, to Google to do that. If you're already involved with it, that's great. If you're not, not aware of it, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, we can send you some information on how to access that. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to have. It's yet another thing back to, you know, exposure and marketing. It's another great way of, uh, getting uh, your, your organization known out there in the world. Uh, and so that is kind of a very, at a very high level that is, uh, uh, you know, tech soup. I'll stop there and see if anybody has any, any questions. I know I've kind of gone through it pretty quick, uh, but, you know, you can certainly go onto our website and, and see all this, but I kind of wanted to give you a unique perspective. Um, so I'll stop there and see if you have any, any questions or comments. Felipe, um, this is Diana. I'm wondering if um, you might talk a little bit more about the digital assessment and like, what are the actual steps to go through it? Like, is it one person who fills it out? Who who should be doing that? Do you recommend that a team in the organization fill it out? And then once you identify your needs, then, then what happens? Like, do we work with somebody from TechSoup to identify the, the resources, the tools, the the products that we should invest in? Like, can you help kind of walk through that? Yeah, we're going to take a deeper dive on that. So that, that's okay. the next thing is we're actually going to go into the digital assessment tool itself uh, and uh, spend a, a good portion of our time uh, doing exactly that. So yes, good, great question. Uh, and that's a great place to start. 
And all, all those questions will be addressed. We definitely have you know answers to all those things. So as you do that, if you could also maybe uh, fold in the website wellness, I had the same questions about the website wellness assessment, like what does that look like and how do we get that help? So if you can address any of that, we'd be grateful. Yeah, so I can I can uh, uh, just show you that a little bit. And so I'm not going to go deeper into that, but I can I can go a little bit deeper here right now. Um, and so uh, so you got the website wellness assessment. So let's go to the page right now. So I click there. It takes me to the page. Let me pop it out. So this is off of our product catalog website wellness assessment. Uh, there's no fee. Uh, here's a description. It's a free service for, uh, for assessing your website and providing guidance for improvement. Uh, and so the assessment highlights common mistakes and pitfalls that can cause websites to underperform or not be indexed by search engines. The assessment reviews the following areas of your website and provides a wellness grade for each. So SEO, your sitemap, backlinks, you know, robots.txt, page load times. That's important. You know, there's uh, you know, there's there's different tools out there, but you know, we'll we'll do it as well. How quickly does your page load? Because if, if it's taking, you know, more than like, you know, 10 or 10 seconds or something, people people move on. You know, people have, you know, low attention spans and you know, they're impatient. And so if a page takes a long time to load, uh, then uh, you know, there, there needs to be something fixed at the other end. Maybe you need to get a new server on the back end or something who's hosting your site and uh it might be taking a long time you know uh mobile compatibility so how do your pages look on um, on the device you know how do they look on a phone uh, versus a, a tablet you know it's like if you're just looking at your website on a computer monitor or on your desk uh but most of your folks are out there mobile and looking at your site through a, a mobile phone how does that look and is that is it optimized you know uh analytics and tracking you know page titles and descriptions so when it comes to indexing a site, if you have images, but you don't have alt text on the back end describing that image, then you're missing an opportunity to really kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, be indexed a little, a little bit deeper and be relevant. And so there's a lot of different things that go into the uh, website wellness assessment. This is not done by us. Uh, this is done by TAP Network, our, uh, our, our uh, partner. And so when you go to get assessment, uh, you fill out this form here. And then you, you click on get wellness assessment. And then you put your URL here. And then what happens is uh, someone from Tap Network will reach out to you. So they'll run some analytics in the back end. If any of you have HubSpot, you can actually do that, you know, uh, in a, a, a very high level assessment of your website using HubSpot. If you have HubSpot, uh, this does that and more. And so it takes a little bit deeper dive. And so you fill this out, you click on get wellness assessment, and then they'll, they can start by running the automated things, uh, but then they'll also reach out to you and uh, and have a you know maybe a brief conversation with you. And so this is uh you know the and then you get a report you know uh, and so you you're able to uh, you know get a report on where you stand. And then once again, what I, where any of these assessments, once you do it once, you can go and do it again and then see how you've done. You've gone you know they'll have some recommendations on on changes. So they might say your pages are loading uh, you know really really slowly. You might want to do X or Y, and uh, maybe you know your you know whoever's hosting. Maybe they they like yeah we know that they're slow. Maybe you should consider getting somebody else to host your site. And then uh, you have that assessment. You go and do the re remediation, and then you can come back and and do it again, and then see you know where you are. And so on any of these assessments, you set the baseline, and then uh, implement some of the suggestions, and then come back do it again and see how you performed. Michelle had a question about whether or not the assessment also analyzes accessibility issues uh, that websites might have, site hearing and other mobility issues, um, as legal actions have come up against websites. Okay, I don't know if I understand the accessibility issues on that, like like for uh, like a a ADA compliance and this stuff. Yes. So site okay. hearing, other mobility issues, a lot of yeah. Uh, Organizations are looking at that, making their um, site ADA compliant and accessible to folks. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, uh, but I can find out. Um, so I'm writing a little note here. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I'm not qualified to answer that, uh, but I will reach out to the folks that do know and and uh, and ask that question. That that's a really really good question. So I'll find out. Okay, and we'll follow up via email with all registrants so that you have that um, answer as part of the, the webinar training. 
And then I also saw Shannon uh, come on the video. Shannon, did you have a question? I did, thank you. Um, can you just talk about the various products you can purchase and whether they're the most up-to-date or are they previous versions? <clears throat> we, have, we have IT support for our organization and they were concerned about, well, why don't you go through the company directly, Adobe Acrobat, for example, and making sure that we're following compliance as far as the licensing goes and making sure that <clears throat> it is, we know what product we're going to get and whether it's going to no longer be supported if it is an older version. Yeah. Yeah, when it comes to software, uh, it's it's uh, you know sometimes it's an older version, sometimes it's a newer version. So like uh, you know with Microsoft, um, you know we just we just got uh, you know uh, Windows eleven, uh, and so it was ten for a while, even though eleven was already out on the market. And so it's not like it's you know ancient. It's not like it's you know uh, you know uh, from three or four or five years ago uh but a lot of times these organizations you know they you know they launch a new version uh they want to um you know let the the free have it be out on the free market for a little while you know because they're about generating revenue and generate as much revenue as they can and then at some point they could say okay now we can put it on the TechSoup catalog at, at a discount and so and it all depends on the individual uh donor company on how they do that there are some uh, that, that don't do that at all. So like uh, Adobe came up with Adobe Express uh, and uh, the minute it launched, it launched on our site as well, uh, you know? And, uh, and so it's, uh, it, it's, it's Adobe Express is free, you know? And so it's, uh, it's something that, um, you know, it, it, it launched on our catalog at the same time it hit the, the open market. Other times it hits the open market and we have, we don't have it yet on our catalog or we have the previous version and uh, that's intentional from the donor side because they're like, well, I want to capture as much revenue as I can on the, on the open market first, and then for the next, uh, you know, six months, uh, you know, I'll sell it out there in the open market, and then we will provide it to uh, to you know, TechSoup catalog. And so every every company is is different on that. Um, with the with hardware though, uh, it's uh, you know with the new hardware, uh, it's it's brand new, and so it's you know the, the newest product. With refurbished, it's a couple of years old, uh, you know, and so um, that's uh, that's more, you know, a little bit more obvious. Uh, but it all depends on the uh, on the donor company and and how they want to you know, roll out versions of their product. Thank you very much. Great. I think we are ready to move into the the transformation and digital assessment tool. All righty. Yeah. All right. So. Oops, wrong one. Okay, so um, our digital assessment tool, take a little bit deeper dive on that. And so um, digital uh, transformation is kind of the, the reason for the digital assessment tool. And so the you know, digital transformation, there's there's a lot of different uh, you know, definitions out there of what it is, uh, you know, and they're all right, you know, uh, they're all correct, they're all accurate. And so we've kind of settled on, on ours. And so uh, doing more with less is kind of, uh, you know, what, what we think that digital transformation should do. And it kind of follows along in what we all have been experiencing for a long time. You know, it's like, it's always happening where you need to do more with less. And so do more of what, do more of your mission and your impact with less, you know, staff and money and time. And so uh, when it comes to digital transformation, uh, you can increase nonprofit digital capacity and capabilities so that you can meet their mission goals and increase their impact. Uh, technology is a great enabler. Uh, and so uh, you can become more efficient with, with technology. Uh, and so uh, I had this, uh, this brief little uh, snippet that I shared with, with Brenna. Um, I think it was Steve Jobs that had said, you know, that humans are very inefficient you know, and, and you know, the way we move. Uh, and so, you know, we walk, we run, we're not very fast when we run. Even the fastest person in the world is slower than a bear, you know? And so, uh, you know, we, we're not very efficient in the way we, we move. Uh, probably the most efficient creature out there is the California condor uh, because it's catching all these, uh, you know, all these currents and, you know, and, and the, the wind, you know, just kind of gliding. It's not really flapping. It's super efficient. Humans, not so efficient. But if you give a human being a bicycle, 
suddenly we start ranking pretty high up there on efficiency. You know, we can cover a large, uh, you know, track of land in a short period of time with very little effort. And so if you think about a bicycle, it's, it's technology, you know, it's hardware, it's technology. And so using that technology, you become more efficient. And so that's, uh, that, that's true uh, with, uh, you know, with the digital transformation. And so how can you uh, leverage technology uh, to, uh, uh, to become more efficient and do more with less, you know? Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, you have to be strategic about it. And so the definition of strategy, at least for me, is the alignment of resources to achieve a goal. And so, you know, what resources do you need uh, to achieve your mission, you know? And so we have resources, we have technology resources here uh, at TechSoup. And, uh, and so, you know, what can you uh, do to, you know, build your tech stack and, uh, and, and, and achieve your mission? So uh, let's see here. We've got, oops. We did a survey uh, back in January of this year uh, where we asked uh, the question, does your organization have a digital transformation plan? And so we got some uh, interesting responses. And so here, you know, A through E. And so A is yes, we have a well-defined and well-communicated plan. So about 3% of the folks said that. So here's A right here, 3%, you know. Uh, B, they said yes, but it isn't very well-defined or well-communicated. So about 16%, so there's B right there. Uh, yes, not uh, but not sure what it is. You know, it's C, not sure if we have a plan is D. But then look at E, a whopping 62% said that they don't have a plan, you know, and so, uh, a lot of nonprofit organizations out there, you know, don't have a plan for digital transformation. Uh, and uh, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, you know, about 90% uh, of the nonprofits in the U.S. are under a million dollars. And so there are 1.8 million nonprofits uh, in, uh, in the U.S. across all the different verticals, whether they're 501c3s, 501c4s, 1.8 million. Of those 1.8 million, 1.5 million are 501c3 nonprofit organizations. And out of those 1.5 million, about 90% are under a million dollars in, in revenue. Uh, and then, uh, you know, like 80% are under $500,000 in revenue. So there's a lot of really small organizations and some of them only have, you know, one or two staff, you know. And so it's understandable that there is no digital transformation plan. A lot of times you're just kind of... Uh, you know, going through things, um, you know, the, the the best that you can, and don't have time to uh, the, to you know develop a digital transformation plan. So we're hoping that uh, with uh, the digital assessment tool that can help uh, to change that. So we have a, a little polling question here: Does your organization have a digital transformation plan? Getting quite a few no's and also, what is this digital transformation plan you speak of? <laughs> Responses. So I'm gonna share the results here. Um, so no, being the overwhelming and then the, what is a digital transformation plan being the second. Okay, all righty, yeah. There are, yeah, so there are no yeses. Uh, that is very, very, uh, very interesting. So. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for your uh, honesty and your replies. And that's okay. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, knowing, uh, you know, it's like what the Donald Rumsfeld uh, quotes, you know, known unknowns and known knowns and unknown unknowns and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, I don't know what I don't know is basically, you know, a, uh, for me, a very important thing. And so, uh, you know, being, being curious and, and starting down this path, I think is very valuable. So just the mere fact that we're talking about digital transformation, even for the folks that, what is this digital transformation plan you speak of? Uh, and so we're, we're, you know, this is the beginning of a, of a journey, you know, and so, you know, being able to, uh, uh, you know, to, you know, move your organization from, you know, maybe being ad hoc to being, you know, optimized, you know, uh, and so, um, So uh, a digital uh, transformation is complex and hard, okay? So it's, it's not easy to go down through this journey. So there are different things that, uh, that you need to do here. Uh, and so uh, you have to identify your tech needs. You need to make a plan. You need to purchase technology. You need to implement technology. You need to train your staff on tech. You need to maintain that technology and then improve your technology. So it's, it's this whole journey. A lot of times organizations, through no fault of anybody, 
you're going and you're you know purchasing tech and you're implementing tech. They're in this realm here, and because they're you know you wear so many hats uh, and you do so many things, it's like you know I, I need a I need a computer, and so you go and you buy a computer, you purchase it, you, you know here's the computer, and you're off and running. But it's it's kind of this ad hoc thing to where you know you're getting the tech, but you're not doing the needs planning or maybe even training the staff. It's like uh, you know here's the computer and here's the software and uh, you know maybe here's a you know a quick little snippet on how to use it. But, and so people are superficial, maybe in their use, maybe there's a lot more functionality that's not being used. And so this is where we find a lot of folks here, you know, uh, and um, it requires a lot of time to do all these things. And so uh, with the digital uh, assessment tool, it kind of takes you methodically through all of these different uh, areas. And so identify, first identify your tech needs, you know, what do you need? And so you might not know. So back to, I don't know what I don't know. Uh, and so, you know, it's like, this will help you know. And so it's like, okay, uh, now we, there's a, 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 a roadmap, there's some guardrails. I know exactly kind of, you know, the path I'm supposed to take. And I know where I sit on that path. And it might be at the very beginning, which is fine, you know, but now you've identified your, your tech needs, you know, making a tech plan. And so are you, uh, you know, uh, buying the technology that you need? And do you really even need that technology? And so one of the stories that I shared uh, with folks is, uh, you know, and I'm probably going to date myself a little bit here, um, during the space race in the 60s, uh, you know, uh, going, going to the moon and, you know, we were, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, beat the, uh, the Soviets to the moon. And so during the space race, NASA spent millions of dollars uh, developing a pen that would write in zero gravity, you know, because a pen has, uh, you know, it's a, it works with gravity and, and so you write, but in zero gravity, it's not pulling the ink down. And so uh, NASA spent millions of dollars developing this pen that would work in zero gravity. Uh, the Soviets used the pencil, you know, and so it, it did the job. No, you know, they didn't spend any money on it, very practical, low tech. And so they didn't need to have, you know, the, the, the latest technology and pens because they were able to use uh, a pencil. And so the same thing, I mean, we're tech soup, you know, we're all about tech. But you know, tech for tech's sake is not necessarily you know a, a good a good you know uh, way to do something. You know, there might be some low tech solutions to things that you can do. Uh, also, uh, you know, you have technology like I mentioned earlier. Technology uh, has a tendency to you know increase efficiency, but then there's also diminishing returns. And so, if you're one person, you have one computer, you become very efficient. If you're one person, you have two computers, maybe you're a little bit more efficient, maybe not doubly, but there's an increase in efficiency because you may be running a program on something and while you're maybe doing something else, you know, I but you're like, wow, I've become, I've become more efficient. That's great. I got two computers. I'm going to get five computers and be even five times more efficient. No, there's diminishing returns. You're, you're not getting more efficient by adding more tech, you know, and so uh, there's, uh, you know, there's some diminishing returns. So tech is not the solution to everything. Just want to make sure that you know we, uh, we are tech evangelists, but we also understand that technology is not the solution for everything. And that's the nice thing about the digital assessment tool is that it it, it explains what where you are, where you need to go, and it has different you know resources that you can tap into, and they're not all tech related. So I'll stop there to see if this resonates with folks. If you have any questions about this, it uh, it, it can seem overwhelming of all these different things you have to do, and if you're like a two or three person operation, it's like, I can't do all those things. Uh, but just knowing the things that need to get done is a win. But I'll stop there and see if anybody has any questions. Doesn't look like, I think we're no? good to go. All right, good to go, awesome. All righty, so uh, using the TechSoup Digital Assessment Tool for your nonprofit planning. Uh, and so, uh, we what we do is we measure digital capability. Okay, it measures it. You know, between three different things: uh, people, process, and technology. So it's not just about the tech itself. It's also about the people. And then how are you going to be using, you know, that tech? And so the alignment of resources to achieve a goal. You align those resources. What are the processes involved with those resources working? And so uh, the technology, for sure, you know data systems, the state of technology, you know, your approach towards technology, tech is, you know, very important and it can make you very efficient. But then the people, you know, your technology culture, you know, your skills and training, do your people have the skills needed to work on this technology? And this is where things like our courses come into play. You know, you need to bring your, your folks along uh, with you and, and make it so that, you know, it's functional for them. 
technology culture, you know, is very important. So there's a saying that uh, culture eats strategy, you know, uh, and it's true, you know, if if the, uh, the the culture is an anti-tech culture, you know, we've uh, always done it this way with paper and pencil, it might be hard to implement technology. And so how do you win hearts and minds and transition your culture to bring people on board through, you know, through, uh, you know, this tech initiative, you know, and then the processes, you know, and so how do you align all these resources, people and tech uh, to, to work efficiently? And then with, within each one of these categories, there are these different stages. You know, ad hoc is the very beginning. It's like you're just kind of reactionary. And then you move your way up to becoming more optimized and adaptive to where you're, you know, you're being more proactive. So this is reactive here, and this is proactive over here. And so it uh, it's able to uh, uh, give you uh, a rating on the digital assessment tool. It gives you a rating of where you are uh, and increasing capability within each one of these. So you might be completely optimized and adaptive in one area, and reactive in another, uh, which is okay. No one is ever, you know, 100% on, on, on the one thing, so. so. We got a little poll here, another one, uh, bring in your own technology, BYOT. Uh, and so uh, what personal tech are you bringing to your nonprofit? You know, and tech is software, hardware, devices, you know, tech subscriptions. Uh, and so, you know, BYOT, bring your own tech is, uh, is a thing. and. Uh, it, it happens across the board, uh, maybe more so in smaller organizations, you know, people kind of, you know, even things you might not think of, like, uh, you know, your phone, it's like, oh, I, I wasn't assigned a phone, I got my own phone, and I'm working through that right now, TechSoup did not give me a phone, I'm using my own personal cell phone, uh, which is fine, I don't have a problem with that, but, you know, that, you know, that's uh, a piece of technology that I'm bringing, and now I need to kind of integrate it within uh, my, my workplace. And so there were certain apps and things I needed to download and permissions I needed to get to put on my phone, but it's my personal tech. And so I'll stop there and see what the results are. Yeah, so we had quite a few others. So I'm just encouraging folks to drop that other in the chat. Um, but cell phones is overwhelmingly the top choice of what folks are bringing. That's not surprising. Uh, the second is a printer or a computer, as a lot of us are now working from home. I um, guess we've gotten very used to also working off of our personal computers or having a using our office printer, work printer. Subscriptions, Zoom, Dropbox. Um, and then for those that put other, and if you want to share, feel free to share what other you might be bringing to your works into your workspace. Those are our results. Office equipment, yeah, the desk, an extra screen, the internet. I didn't even think to put the internet on here. Thank you, Kira. Yeah, that's that's true. That's very, that's a really really good one. I uh, yeah, I, I I use my own internet as well. So yeah, it's like that all counts as as bringing your own tech for sure. Great. Yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised about cell phones. That's probably the the most common. Uh, you know, Dropbox. Um, if you a tech, anybody that's responsible for tech. Uh, they cringe when you have your own like Dropbox account because now you're putting. Uh, your organization's documents into your own private Dropbox, and now they don't, you know, the the, the tech department, as you get larger, is, is becoming a larger organization, the tech department wants to control all these things, and and that's one of the things that I found that, you know, that kind of is, that irks them a lot, is when there's uh, organizational data sitting is somewhere outside of the org in someone's personal Dropbox, and, you know, Dropbox, I think is pretty safe, uh, but, uh, you know, you, you, you never know, you know, how someone will get hacked or what's going to happen to that. Or you know, did you give your, you know, logging to someone? Is it sitting there next to your, you know, recipes for butt cake? You know, and so, uh, what, you know, any technology person, if you're running a tech department, they see that Dropbox or Box or some other third party, uh, you know, they, that isn't under the umbrella of the organization, they kind of really freak out a little bit. So uh, just, a, just a little FYI on, on that. Um, so yeah, thanks for taking that poll. Uh, so that that's a thing. It will continue to be a thing. And it, I think it doesn't really matter uh, how big uh, the organization uh, is. And so um, I've been at, uh, at, this is my fifth nonprofit here at TechSoup. Uh, at TechSoup, we're about a $35 million organization. I was at National Safety Council. We were about a $75 million organization. Had to use my own cell phone, you know. 
Uh, I was at uh, American Health, Inf uh, Health Information Management Association, AHIMA, uh, and they're also very large. They're about $90 million in revenue. I uh, use my own cell phone. And so it, it, cell phone seems to be uh, the, the one comment across the board, regardless of how big the organization is. So thank you for sharing those, uh, those insights. And so uh, the digital assessment tool aims to facilitate intentional conversations and provide resources to understand how to plan your organization's digital transformation. And so there are a lot of different types of resources. There's software, there's hardware, there's courses, there's services. You know, we we went through uh, through some of those uh, during the, the bubble map presentation. You know, the uh, website wellness assessment. You know, the courses on how to you know use Teams or Excel. Um, we also have consultants uh, that uh, that we that we partner with uh, that are able to help facilitate. So you're not, you know, in this alone. And so some of you might already have a third party consultant that is, uh, you know, working on your technology. That's great. You might want to, to make them your registered agent so they can then request uh, products on your behalf, you know, because they know what you would need. Uh, if you don't have a consultant and you feel kind of a little overwhelmed, you know, you, we have a consultant network that you can kind of reach out to. Uh, and uh, also our partners like Tap Network, uh, you know, they can help as well. There's a cost associated with it, but it's, you know, they, they work exclusively with nonprofits. And so the pricing is uh, not as, as high as it would be for, uh, you know, consultants that are for-profit. And so uh, if you're a for-profit organization, you want, you know, uh, technology consultation from one of our consultants, they, they don't take it on board. They only take nonprofits. And so that's why they keep their prices low. Uh, you know, there's uh, policies, you know, that uh, that we have that you can download, webinars, blogs, a lot of different resources that you can uh, tap into. And then finally, there's this journey that you're going through. And so I, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier. So this is this is a journey. It's a process. Uh, and so you know, it's not going to get done, you know, right away. Everything's not going to get done right away. Imagine that, you know, you're, you're back in, in school, you know, and so you don't get through, you know, high school or college, you know, in, in, in six months, you know, it takes a while, you know, three years, four years, you know, sometimes some people it's five years, you know, and so you go through this journey and then you come out the other end, you know, you know uh, transformed. And so the same thing, this is not going to happen overnight, uh, but just starting the journey is, is, a, is a big, uh, a big step. Uh, and so you take your initial assessment uh, and then you get your initial rating and your initial recommendations. That's the initial assessment. And then you can go and adopt those changes and recommendations. I'll show you those once we jump into the DAT itself, the digital assessment tool. Uh, and then you can take others. The initial assessment you do once. And so it's important that, uh, that you, know, you get the right person signing up for the digital assessment tool and doing the initial assessment. And so that is, it should be probably the most knowledgeable person that, that does it. But once you do it, you only do it once. That's your baseline. And then uh, all the other uh, assessments that are embedded. So there's seven, there's the initial one and there's seven individual categories. All the other ones you can do as many times as you want, but the initial assessment, you only do it once. And so that should probably come from the uh, most knowledgeable person uh, within your organization. And then there's that continuous uh, improvement loop, right? And so you go and you reassess, you get a new rating, new recommendations. And so, you know, if you do this, uh, you know, every year, every two years, you know, you start with your baseline and then you make some adjustments and then you take it again. The time commitment for the digital assessment tool uh, is uh, like about three to three and a half hours, uh, but it, it, it could take longer if you need to bring somebody in that does that. So like digital security, if you have uh, a consultant that is handling some of your tech and they're the most knowledgeable on digital security, you might have to wait until they're ready to take it. They might not have time to take it right away. Uh, you know, you can have somebody that's basically knowledgeable, but they might, they might be like, you know, unknown a lot of times and not, not really get a feel for it. And so three and a half hours is kind of the, the time, the actual time it takes, uh, but it might take you a week or two to kind of get through all the modules because you have to kind of get those right people to kind of come in and, and take the uh, that individual assessment. So uh, when you go to this uh, URL here, assessment.techsoup.org, and we'll provide you with these links, you can get started. And so this is the landing page here. And then uh, you can uh, click the sign up button here. And so you click on it, you sign up, and uh, you're able to then uh, you know, be able to start taking the digital assessment tool. Uh, and so there are uh, different modules. There are, are seven different modules. There's the introductory assessment. Uh, there's operations and collaboration, fundraising development, digital security, 
communications and marketing, program delivery and management, and hardware and infrastructure. And so we're going to dive a little bit deep into the introductory assessment. I'll show you the individual questions, and then we'll uh, we can do one live. I think I, I selected fundraising and development uh, to do it live. So the introductory assessment has twenty questions. It sets the best baseline that can only be taken once. And then here are the questions for the introductory assessment. And this is the way they appear. These are screenshots. This is the way they appear on the digital assessment tool. So question number one, how does your organization plan and coordinate service delivery? Please select the option that best fits your organization. So the first one is our organization does not do direct service delivery. Okay, click on that. Or we use very little technology to plan and coordinate services. And where we do use it, tools vary according to individual staff preference. Technical support, processes, and training for technology to facilitate or track services delivery are inadequate or non-existent. And so you can select on that. And you have a bunch of different uh, questions here. And this uh, runs up across that scale from ad hoc to optimized and, and, and be more proactive. And so you get to select what they are here. Uh, question number two, how did your organization facilitate project management for programs? You know, you look at the third one down, we use standard project management tool set that generally meets our needs, but it may lack some features or we are not using it to advanced features. Process support and training are adequate. And so you can select that. Um, you know, there's, uh, I only did a, a handful of questions here so you kind of understand what, what we're looking at. How did your organization how, how, develop program related data? I'm sorry, somebody has a question? Yeah, how, what was the time amount that you said, the estimated time for doing the initial assessment? I think the initial one is about 25 minutes. 25 minutes, but to do all of the modules about along with the initials, that's about three hours. Okay. About three hours, yeah. All right, great. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, uh, how does your organization collect program related data? Once again, a series of questions. How does your organization plan, coordinate, and measure fundraising campaigns? You know, our organization does not run fundraising campaigns or, you know, we use a full featured fundraising platform or robust module in our CRM that meets current needs. And so you select those uh, those questions there. In the last series here, these are there are 20 questions. I only kind of highlighted the top, the first six. How does your organization manage its ongoing relationship with individual donors? And how does your organization establish and develop new donor relationships? And so you're able to select these. Um, but there's um, a drop down. Uh, and so if you notice on all the questions, there was uh, this little drop down area here that said more details. Uh, and so uh, if you ask the question, we provide some cybersecurity awareness or training resources, but there is no standard or routine process or, or training. And so you click on more details, you get a little bit more. If you, uh, you need some clarity on this, you know, it's like, what does it mean? An internal person provides some training or cybersecurity tips to our staff occasionally. You know, we provide some resources on an ad hoc basis. And so each question that you have has this more details, expands it out to give you a little bit more clarity um, on, on uh, what that question means. Okay. And so we're going to, we'll jump into the actual demo itself. Uh, I need to switch screens here, but while I'm doing that, let's see if you have any, uh, any questions or comments. No, the, the question that we got was how long was the initial assessment? So okay. we did have to have a couple of people drop off just for the top of the hour. Oh, Becca, I see you came on video. Do you have a question? I, yeah, I have a quick question. Um, this looks really great. And I was just wondering, would you recommend that your whole team or or like like how many people should be involved in doing it? Because I'm looking at it thinking, well, I could probably answer most of those questions, but it's also a good conversation starter about some things and good for perspective. And if you can only do it once, should you bring the whole team to do the whole thing or just the initial assessment? Yeah, so you can uh, assign different people to do different parts of the, uh, the assessment. And so for digital security, for example, for cybersecurity, you can uh, assign it to three different people and three different people take the same thing and then it aggregates all of those results. The only thing that you can't do that with is the initial assessment. And so you might want to have one person sign up uh, to do the initial assessment, but you can have your team in the room, you know, and, uh, you know, go through it as a team and answer it as a team. So there's only one person that was is clicking the actual button on the, uh, the assessment itself. 
but you have a consensus in the room of what that means and what you're you know what you're going to do and so it, it would be a good idea to you know maybe uh you know put it up put it up on the screen have people sit around the table you go through it and then you know you could discuss it and uh and, and and answer the questions as a group awesome thank you thanks for sharing this yeah, absolutely all righty so i'm going to jump here into the uh the digital assessment tool itself uh and so um this is what the graphic user interface looks like and so uh kind of this is your first time seeing it and so uh, it asked me to set some goals and so i set my goals here leverage seo for our website establish a vulnerability management system to prevent cyber attacks and establish a volunteer management system you know you can go and edit your your goals at any time you know and so it's like your goals might change and so it's like you know instead of leveraging seo i might want to do something different and so you can go and change your goals, but you set your goals, you know, and it shows up right there. And then, uh, and then you have your overall rating. I don't have an overall rating yet uh, because I've only just done the uh, the introductory assessment. I haven't done the whole thing, uh, but it'll give you where you are. And so here's the definitions. Ad hoc as organizations make reactive and isolated investments in people, processes, technology, solutions in order to meet critical needs. And so reactive. Uh, number two is functional. Functional organizations make some, some investments in people, processes, and technology solutions in order to meet immediate day-to-day -day needs. And so it's like you kind of, as you need it, you, you acquire these things. And so standardized organizations, uh, staffing, training, and processes are well-developed. So technology solutions are used according to sets of standardized guidelines across the organization. Standardized is good. I know that we have four and five up here. But if you're standardized, uh, you know, in, in any of these areas, uh, you're in a pretty good place. You know, th this is like, you know, much, much higher and sometimes, you know, even maybe difficult to get to. So if you land on, you know, on standardized uh, or better on these, but if you land on standardized, don't feel like, oh, you know, we, 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 we're not doing very good. We need to be an adaptive. Standardized is fine. You know, that's not a problem, you know. Uh, or, you know, even, even, even functional, it's okay. You know, if you're two and three, that's okay. Uh, and, uh, being adaptive across the board as an overall rating is, is kind of difficult to get to without a lot of staff and a lot of resources. And so, you know, is an overall rating being standardized? That that's a good thing. Uh, number four, uh, optimized organizations recognize the importance of continual investment in the improvement of technology solutions and the people and processes required to support them. And so you're optimizing you know, you're, uh, you know, you're making the most use out of the, the tech stack that you have uh, and, uh, and you're, uh, you know, you're moving forward. And then finally, adaptive organizations consistently evaluate technology for strategic advantage and investment in, in uh, uh, significantly in people and processes to be at the forefront of effective technology usage. And so this is when you have your annual strategic plan and there's a clearly defined, you know, tech portion of that strategic plan. Uh, with uh, with tactics associated with it and stuff, and so this is uh, this is at a very very high level, and uh, and so it's it, as an overall rating, hard to get to adapt, and so I would say as an overall rating, if you're hovering around three, uh, I think you're good. You know, uh, you know, strive for sure, you know, to get up here, uh, but don't feel bad if you if you land here. You know, even after if you start here and you land here, that's some pretty good progress. Uh, here's the assessments, you know, and so. Uh, the initial ass introductory assessment is here. So here it says 20 questions, 25 minutes to, to take it. And so I completed this one. We'll be able to see the results. Uh, but then there's uh, the six that you can take more often. So digital security, 15 questions, takes about 30 minutes. Fundraising and development, 13 questions, about 20 minutes. Operations, 17 questions, 25 minutes. Communications, 14 questions, 20 minutes. Program delivery, 13 questions, 20 minutes. Hardware infrastructure, 13 questions, 25 minutes. These have not been assigned uh, because uh, I haven't assigned them yet. This one was assigned here. And so these, these are the assessments. Uh, I took the introductory one. I can share those results in a second, but I wanted to come up here. First, uh, you could add teammates. Uh, and so if you look here, welcome, Dat. Dat is me. That's I'm the admin. So there it is right there, Dat demo. That's me. I'm the operations administrator. And so you know, that's me. And then I assigned a couple of people uh, to, uh, and I invited my teammates. I invited Dat Demo 955, uh, which we'll be looking at in a little bit. 
and also invited uh, Reggie Dwight uh, to, to join us. So you're able to invite uh, folks here, you put in their email, you give them a role, and then you uh, hit an invite. And so you're able to invite people. And then once you invite them, uh, then uh, who was that was asking about bringing the team together? Uh, this is the last question. Becca. Okay. So this is this is to your to your point. You can invite people uh, to take these different modules. So the one we were talking about, where you bring people into the conference room and you do it as a team, that's the introductory assessment. But these others here, you can go and this is where you invite your teams and you put their info in there. There's, remember, there's no charge to this. You can invite as many people as you want, and then uh, you can invite them. They're in, but they're not yet assigned anything. Then once you invite them, they're just sitting there haven't been assigned anything. So you can invite as many people as you want, then you choose who to assign what to. Uh, and then there are some recommendations after you take your uh, your assessment. So uh, we're gonna dive into the uh, the results here. So we got the uh, introductory assessment. So I am functional. That's my review of my introductory assessment. This assessment briefly evaluates your organization's capabilities in the following key areas from each of the six assessment categories beneficiary management, donor stewardship, organization presence, information management, asset management, threat protection. It is designed to provide some initial recommendations to jumpstart your organization and its digital transformation. So we take a look at the results here. So I, I did it, I'm functional, you know, it's like, at least I'm not ad hoc, you know? And so I, I click on here and I can take a look at the results. So uh, it's only showing me what I selected. And so if you recall, when we asked this first question, how did your organization plan and coordinate service delivery? Uh, it's it's giving me just my response and you know, the little drop down here. And so it's not giving me all the choices, just what it is that I selected. And so we use basic tools to plan and coordinate services, but they're not fully, they don't fully meet our needs, and we aren't using them as well as we could. And so you know, that's that's my response there. Uh, you know, how does your organization facilitate project management? That was my response. You know, and so you got all 20 questions here. You know, it's like, how does your organization assess its network systems, applications, and data for vulnerabilities that could be exploited in a cyber attack and address those vulnerabilities? Our organization does not do the vulnerability assessments. So there's, uh, you, know, there's you know, there's that issue there. And so you're able to do, so once you get these results here, you're able to share them with folks by printing it. And so you can go and hit print. Well, there we go. And so you can print the PDF if you like, you know, and then you create a PDF of this and, uh, and then you can share it with folks. And so um, if you uh, want to see, so when you sign up for the, for the, um, the DAT, the digital assessment tool as an administrator is the first person doing it, you know, you can go and click on the introductory assessment and take a look at all these and, and see, you know, who should I have in the room to ask these questions? Uh, and so, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, once you've, you've done it, then you can you know, print this. If they don't have access, if they were just sitting in the room, but you didn't invite them, you can print these out and, and then go back over it and say, remember when we, you know, last week when we did this, here's the results. Uh, and uh, you can got, kind of go through them and hand them out to folks, email them and hand them out. So it has that PDF. So that was the uh, the introductory assessment, and then it has uh, some recommendations for me here. And so uh, here's some recommendations based on that initial assessment. Uh, and so uh, there's an article I can read why your nonprofit needs to consider project management. And so that has to do with the project management question. Uh, you know, 10 steps to rapid strategy implementation. And so we talked about strategy being the alignment of resources to achieve a goal. And so, you know, there, here's a resource to kind of help in, uh, in developing strategy. And so there's all these different uh, things here uh, that, you can, uh, that you can look at. So these are, you can look at all, here's, you know, this, is, this, this one's in progress. And so this is one that I was, uh, that I assigned to that demo 955. And so tools to collect and analyze field data. So you click on these and it tells you a little bit about it, length, when it was published. It's from 2018, but it's still relevant. Uh, and so you can then click on it and go to the article. So there it is. Tools to collect and analyze field data. Technology can help your nonprofit understand constituents' needs better. And go, it goes and it kind of tells you, uh, you've got uh, you know, question pro that you can use uh, to do online surveys. 
uh, you know, it's uh, a low cost integration solutions, mobile devices, you know, it's got a bunch of different things on here uh, that you can uh, that you can leverage. And so that's the uh, that's the tool there. So you can read the article. So on all of these, there'll be some these uh, resources. These are overall recommendations and resources that you can use uh, for uh, for doing um, the uh, uh, for for supporting that initial introductory assessment. So based on this, they gave me these uh, um, uh, these resources. As I do more of these, this number will grow. And so right now, I've only done one; haven't done this second one. Uh, I'll stop there. Uh, we're going to jump into digital security. I have an, another screen to show you that because I assigned digital security to uh, um, I think I assigned it to Dead Demo ninety five. Uh, it says here DD, but we, we'll run into it and you'll see. We'll run through it in real time. We'll do fifteen questions. It won't take us thirty minutes because I'm just going to click on stuff. Uh, but you'll see kind of how it goes through. Uh, but I'll stop there and see if anybody has any any questions about this portion. Not seeing any questions in the chat box so far. No? Okay. I got a, a quick little trivia question. Uh, I invited Reggie Dwight. Uh, does anybody know who Reggie Dwight is? No? no. It's, uh, it's Elton John. <laughs> Elton, Elton John's real name is uh, Reggie Dwight. I use Reggie Dwight all the time. And so, uh, whenever I have to do something like this, uh, I use Reggie Dwight as a as a name, and so it's uh it's Elton John. That's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Just thought I'd, I'd uh I should I should have offered a prize anybody that can figure that one out. So, <laughs> alrighty, uh, let's jump into uh, into digital security. Um, and so let's start the assessment. And so for all of these, they all follow the same format. Uh, you know, it's uh you uh. This is one of six uh, categorical assessments to make up the full assessment. There are 15 questions. There's no time limit, but it takes about 30 minutes to finish. Your progress will be saved automatically, so feel free to take a break. As an administrator, you can invite and assign teammates to participate or print a copy to share. And so, once again, since this is not the initial assessment, uh, this is one of the six that you I can take it, I can assign it, somebody else can take it. You can take this multiple times by multiple people. So. Click on here to start the assessment, and here we go. So, uh, um, I think I already I already went through some questions over here. So, if you'll notice, I already went through one, and I selected here. Next question, I went through two. I selected, so I can jump over to uh, five. So, uh, how does your organization manage the security of mobile devices it owns? Okay, and so key word being it owns because we the, the poll said everybody's bringing their own phone and so our organization does not own mobile devices and so if everybody's doing their own I would click on that right uh, but you might say uh, if we manage mobile phones at all it's a manual process technical support processes and training for this technology are inadequate or non-existent more detail what do you mean by that well we typically deploy one device at a time we do not typically monitor the devices or their security settings Staff members have full control over their mobile devices and can modify them as they choose, including applying software updates, processes like documentation. Leadership gets very little attention and resources to this type of technology. And so it tells you a little bit more of what that is. If you were to select this one, that you don't, don't own, own mobile devices, well, then you might have a gap there. You know, there might be some things that are happening. If somebody goes and you don't own the device and now you've downloaded the CRM app for HubSpot, and now you're able to access uh, all of your contacts through the mobile app on your phone. Now there's a gateway for someone to get, you know, they hack your phone, your personal phone. Now there's a gateway into your organization's database. And so, you know, saying that we don't own our own mobile devices, it, you're not off the hook. <laughs> you're basically saying people are going to have mobile devices. Everybody has their mobile phone. So that kind of is then a red flag. And so we can select that. Or we can say, uh, you know, we uh, use a comprehensive, sophisticated MDM system that meets current needs as well as anticipated future needs. There is a seamless integration and strong support. Staff are experts in the system, you know, uh, and so what do they mean by that? Uh, we use our MDM system to deploy, enroll, and manage all organization-wide mobile devices. The system contains centralized and complete repository of our software applications and completely integrates with our systems. And so you might be there. And so that's fine. You know, you want to select that on to the next question. 
six. Let's put, you know, select that one on to the next question. Seven. You know, I'm just, just kind of going through these pretty quickly, um, you know, so that we can get to the end of question uh, 15, I believe. And then uh, let's do this one here. And so it's quick to, if you're just clicking, it's not doing me any service by getting through it really fast. I'm just doing this as a demo, but you, you might want to really take some time and, and think about it. And you can step away if you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that question. I need to find out more. And so you can step away and come back and pick up where you left off, just like you saw that I did because we started on question five because I stopped and uh, you know we did that. So there we go. So I just did it. And uh, you know there's all my results. Here's all my questions. You know, uh, and so you can review them. And if you're like, well, I'm not so sure about that, you can go and you can edit it. You can click here and edit your response. And you're like, well, we're more like right around there, you know, and so update my answer. And so now, you know, you've uh, you've got, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the results there. And then you could submit the assessment down here. You can invite someone to review or you can submit the assessment. You can also invite others up here uh, to complete the, uh, their profile and do this, and you can print the results as well. So let's submit this. Thank you, view your rating and recommendations. And there we go. So we're standardized in digital security. So we were functional in our, in our uh, initial assessment, but now we're standardized here. And then here are some you know, resources that we can uh, do. So device management, encryption for nonprofits, you know, it's a blog post, you know, state-of-the-art ways to create a secure password, you know, another blog post. Uh, Dashlane business, one-year subscription, access to discounted rates, that's software. So that's, you know, there's a product recommendation here for us. So we can then go, the cost is $35. You can go to the product catalog and uh, it shows you uh, what is Dashlane and what's the offer. So $35 it costs. This offer provides access to a 50% discount on Dashlane team or Dashlane business subscription. It says it, uh, Dashlane securely stores passwords, payment methods, and other private data. So there's a, there's a product recommendation there. So, and then we, we uh, always invite feedback. Was this recommendation useful? You know, if it was, you say yes. If it wasn't, you know, you can submit your feedback. And, uh, and then uh, there you go. So that is uh, the digital assessment tool. We can go back to uh, you know our uh, our dashboard here, and you can see that uh, you know we we took that, and so DT still needs to do it. So I invited Dat Demo nine five five to take it as well. So that's in progress for the Dat Demo to do it. And I, I didn't invite Reggie, to do it, so Reggie's not invited there. Uh, and so this is a uh, so you'll notice the number of recommendations increased because now we've got two assessments under our belt. We have fundraising and development and the introductory. So when we just did the introductory, there were nine recommendations. Now there are 27. And so it, uh, it continues to grow as you go and do these different assessments. So I'll stop there. That's the digital assessment tool. I know that we're coming up on time, um, but um, you know, we, I think we have a few minutes for, for some questions. Great, thank you. I just dropped links in the chat box again for folks. Um, but if there are any questions as we wrap up, feel free to, to drop them in the chat or come off video and off of mute. No questions, Felipe, just to say thank you. This is an incredible resource in the way you've like, it just spits out all these various recommendations, super easy to use. Um, yeah, thank you. I'll be promoting it with some of the groups that I, I work with. Yeah, great. Yeah. Did, did, did it, I know that you had the initial question on taking a deeper dive. Did, was that enough uh, information? Is there anything that you're still kind of questionable on? I'm, I'm happy yeah. to, uh, to, to meet one-on-one -on -one with anyone if you want to uh, take a deeper dive and maybe do an actual screen share and run through things and so. Thank you. No, I think by sharing this recording, we'll be able to at least get started on the, the first, the baseline step, and then take it from there. Appreciate your offer. Okay. I just want to say thank you as well. It was very helpful. Great. Good to hear.
any other and i'm just making sure for those that need them to i'm redropping the website wellness assessment and the digital marketing assessment also back into the chat so that you have all of those links um, they will also be linked with the recording um, that you will receive directly via email as soon as we have it uploaded uh, and we will follow up with Lebe about the question uh, regarding accessibility and the web website wellness uh, so we can make sure that we have that question answered as well in the meantime thank you so very much for your participation and registration today we very much appreciate TechSoup for being willing to uh, go through who they are and how they can help our nonprofit network um, and then enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.